Okay, so we're starting on this. Um, as you can see, some of the parts are disassembled, but uh, no worries. I gotta put it back together with, um, well, our trusty glue gun here. Uh, that way they don't fall apart when I remove them for final uh, look at. So basically what we've done is we've 3D printed, uh, we've probably seen it, a bunch of parts to make up our headers. And no, we're not using these, but this will give us a mock-up. These are actually degreed. Um, we know the different widths and the different angles that these are made out of. So to fab that out of the pipe that we have should be uh, a little bit quicker um, and better. So, and we could reproduce it once we have everything done. So that's the plan. So what you're going to watch me do is basically hot glue all this stuff together. And then, um, yeah, hopefully everything will come apart as it should, uh, each piece on its own. And, um... I don't know, we'll see. So here we go. Okay, so what you just saw was my attempt to recreate what Kyle had built, uh, which is looked like this. This is what Kyle had built in the picture. Uh, what happened was had some issues with the PLA, which is the material that we're using for building these. So Kyle and I took some time. Uh, he, he had some hours put into it and it made me feel really bad, but uh, we got it knocked out. We recreated it um, somewhat what it looks like. Uh, so these are the individual pipes removed. All this stuff that uh, is dripping or looks like to be dripping is actually hot glue. And we hot glued all these in place while they are on the vehicle and then slowly moved everything away. Now you may be asking, well, why would you have to do that? I will show you. So like I mentioned before, the reason we are having issues is because these fittings are made out of PLA. And what that means is this plastic is fairly brittle. And if I was to do this again, I would print all this in ABS. That would help with this because they snap off right here. And if you have more than one that snap off on these, um, like here, they will no longer connect. They literally just sit in there. So to get around that, we started using hot glue to bring it all together and keep everything from rotating because that was another issue because there's just enough space in these that you can rotate while they're connected, which is awesome to, to move and bend and make bends. It's great. But uh, when you're trying to keep it all together as one, it doesn't work out so well. So that's what we're doing. So the pipes have been removed. Uh, the one pipe that we do have currently done is number seven, which is the first cylinder here and it shoots straight back to the collector all the way back in there that is right here it has been tacked up and that's what we use as a demo basic or a model to wrap everything around and kind of move everything through and make sure that everything's good to go so um, this is the last one it just got tacked in place with hot glue it will be removed we have pipes on order to finish out all this stuff so then we'll start uh, cutting, and cutting and welding and cutting and welding and cutting and cutting and cutting and cutting and welding uh, so that's how it's gonna go uh, yeah that's next okay this is uh, the second fitment so I've actually removed every one of these and did more glue try to hold that mold um, how we want it. Uh, this one is obviously the only stainless one, so I will remove these again and uh, we'll start cutting. Um, Got to get a vertical bandsaw to make this stuff happen, to make the cuts happen. But uh, we did get some tight, bunch of stainless 180 bins, so that should be good. Got to make a template to uh, cut those the correct way at 22 and a half degrees for the most part and then we can start building these out 
All right. Next step is removing all these studs. And the reason being is because I would like to be able to put the motor in and out uh, without having to remove the headers. Or, let me rephrase that. In order to remove the headers, I have to pull the motor, right? So once they get put in, then we can lower it down. Well, with studs, it's not going to work out well because you'd actually have to have the header out a little further and then put it towards it. So if I use bolts, I can get away with that. What we're using is these little extractors. Um, this is uh, cobalt. Go over here and check. I've used these. You've seen me use these on the headers before, and they work out really well. So, uh, oh, Irwin, bolt grip. These things, they work very well. So, let's update there. Also, we designed a thing. We designed a thing. This is the brainchild of Kyle again. So, this is 3D printed mold that we just got done doing. This is the test. So what we can do is put these in here. I'm going to try to do this one-handed. Put that in there. Figuratively put that there. Um, and then we can put it in the bandsaw and we can rotate this once we cut these these off because these are for you know only specific lengths. Um, we can rotate that 180 in there and we can start basically cutting out those 22 and a half which are these guys right here that's a 22 and a half that's a 22 and a half that's a 22 and a half so I'm not gonna have to do that for everything but it's gonna help so if we need to get to that point of you know one turn one turn one turn we can do that What's left, or what we're printing now, this is the final piece of resistance. Uh, this is going to be the final product. So now you can see we put some bolts in it. Um, that's gonna, those are going to through bolt, which uh, once I get done with this, you'll see. So, yep, that's where we're at. One eternity later. Yo! Good to be back, finally. Sorry that it took so long. Uh, and the whole reason is because of this, what you're seeing here. I couldn't figure out a way to come up with how to cut these. So uh, we tried the horizontal bandsaw, didn't work. We bought a wood bandsaw to convert, like Motor Trend I think did. And with the pulleys and everything, didn't work. So came up to using our Harbor Freight bandsaw with this swag kit. Um, off-road off online kit and uh, so far doing good. Built a jig, cuts them, perfect. I don't know if you can see that. Just how we want them. So, what's that mean? <clears throat> I'll show you. I'll show you what that means. Come with me. What that means is that now <laughs> we can finally Start cutting all this and welding and cutting and welding, and cutting and welding. I may have said that already, but now we're going to get started. So uh, feel free to watch me cut some stuff and hopefully we can do stuff or else this is all for nothing. And I have no idea what we do after that. All right, here we go. Some of this isn't really working out. Um, go figure, right? So what's happening is I'm not getting exact cuts similar to the 3D models. So, and also I'm trying to utilize other bins and such. What the three modeling did was it helped me to be able to understand where I need to go, what I needed to do. So that's working out fine. Also, I wanted to show you if you are doing this and take on this task, I know my welds are terrible, but um, what I've found out is that this type of tape, the poly, I think it's 
poly tape, poly, I'll have to put it up on the screen here. I can't remember how to say it. Anyways, it's heat resistant. It works very well. Um, the masking tape actually acts a little bit more rigid. The problem is, is if you're welding, this catches fire, which is no good. But so what I've been doing is I've been taking like little, like a razor blade, cutting that out and then basically tacking it and good to go. Same way with this tape, but if you put too much heat in this, um, I notice at least with this blue stuff, it will start to get gooey and let the pipe slide. Um, this kind of, I mean, either way, if you're tacking, you should be able to use these, but um, that's what I'm saying. Uh, that's how I'm doing it, and uh, we'll see how this, how this goes. All right, two out of six. Actually, sorry, two out of 12. So you can see uh, this is where this one's going, and this is going to be the fun one right here where she snakes around. Again, we're looking at like 25 inches um, in length because that's what the measurement is for this pipe. Um, so each one of these has to somehow end up at 25. That's why you see uh, like a coiled up snake down there. Um, that's, you know, just what we're dealing with. So on to the next.